Now, this is the fly I'm going to be tying. Now, basically, this is just a variant of the Francis shrimp. It's just a, it's a shrimp pattern. Uh, it's one I tie. I've uh, done it for many years. There's a there's a couple that I like. Now here's one here I've tied. It's basically a soldier palmer. It's got a wee red tag at the back, so you can do that variant. There's a couple. Uh, sometimes that works really well. Uh, the, this is a, like the sparse version, slightly lighter in dressing. It must be slightly as heavy as that. Um, the hook I'm using actually. This is a a loop double size. This is a size 14. This is a, a new hook in the market. A friend of mine gave me two or three to try out, see what they like, and uh, I really like it. I like the, especially the strength, it's really, really strong. And uh, so it's going to sit well in the, I like this fly in the rough water, uh, especially in the warmer months of the year, like just now, where you want, that's where the fish I find will lay, especially the oxygen in the water. Now, thread I'm going to be using, this is a Unithread 8 in Red. We have waxed the thread. Just start at the eye, come down three or four turns or so, take away the waste. Now I'm going to form the tag using a small oval tinsel in gold. Just run it down. Now the feelers you can put on before the tag, you can tie them in at this point uh, and then put the tag in. I just, that doesn't matter, on the top it suits. So what I've done is obviously take the thread down. I'm going to form the tag with the oval tinsel, just winding down the hook. It's four turns, and then I'm going to bring the oval tinsel between the hooks and underneath, keeping it tight. I'm going to catch it in. You can see there. So that basically locks it in. Uh, you just square it up a wee bit. There we are. And then we can take the thread up, make sure it's secure. Trim away. Now make sure you wax your thread at this point. Two white hackles, just basically cock hackles. So what I like to do is just sort of medium length to large. Just hold them one on top of the other with the tips. I hold the tips of the feathers. Just bring out the fibres. And then bring them out together and then I just tear away the fibres. Both sides, both hackles at the same time. It's quicker to do it that way. And just tear it towards the back. And then to make sure it's lined up. This size I don't want it too heavy. So trim. So I've got my two feelers there. You want them to curve away from the hook. So you put them on in a way that will encourage that. So I just lay them on the top. Length is really the feelers of the shrimp quite long. So you want a good length, you can be at least, if you're putting the shrimp tail on, probably twice that. You encourage them to curve away just by putting your nail in it. You'll do this when you're fishing the, the tail, so you've got your curls there, and then we can trim. Now I'm going to trim this slightly, because I want it to be thicker up the top here. Make sure they're tied in. And then work the thread back up. Always thinking of the like a taper towards the eye, as you can probably see there. Now for the legs, I'm going to be using the golden pheasant, the uh, the breast, the red breast. That's what you're using all the shrimps, obviously. Uh, I'm going to take away what I don't need. So you're looking for a length. If you look at it, it's going to be halfway into the feelers. So I'm just going to reveal the the tip of the feather, you can fold it, just fold it with your fingers, just hold it, so you can fold the fibre so that it actually goes on easier, so then just pull it away, you can tie this, you can tie this in by the tip, we've waxed with thread so there's plenty of grip there, just tie it against up, thread right up against the tag and then come up, just look at this as a Hackle, obviously that you're going to, much like finishing off a fly, just imagine that the head length, or just before the head. 
and then we can wind this to suit yourself. Test out your time. It's a bit fiddly with the double hook. Always keeping that nice and tight. And then just ignore the fibres at this point. Make sure this is secure and nice and tight. Again, just thinking of the taper. Yeah, I've got this is just basically an old toothbrush. I'm just going to brush out the fibres because they'll be twisted around the hook. All the way around. Save your fingers by using this. And then I'm going to get some back to the Roval Gold tinsel. We cast this on the way back down. So we catch it in, the underside, and then work towards your legs. And then I'm just going to use some red wool. This is normal red wool. And this has got a wee bit of fluorescence in it. I just bought this from the local wheel shop. And then catch this in. Wind up. You'll see how, because we, we've been tapering, the tears we're tying in, we're going to get a tapered body. Just catch it in when you're happy. See if it turns. Now you can either put a hackle on the front, bring a rib up and then hackle on the front or what I'm going to do here is I'm going to palmer and take a, a natural brown. This is off a saddle, this is the saddle, you've got the, the smaller feathers at the bottom that are, if you look at it, it's quite soft at the bottom here and then gets, uh, well because it's a cock hackle, but a bit more sharper and finer. Sometimes they get a wee bit longer, so again it adds into the shape of the fly. So I want to start it off quite soft. So take away the fluff. Yeah, make sure you latch your thread. Make sure that you tie this in. Do a turn at the top and then we wind down. Oops. I just palm on the body. Not many turns like there's one, two, into the third turn. Just gonna get my rib. Just follow around with the hackle. One, two, three. It's gonna be quick checks, yeah it looks that's fine. Just make sure before you bring your rib in to the head area, you stroke back the fibres so you don't catch them in. Sure you secure it and then trim away your rib. Hackle tip. Now you, again you could finish practically off like this point or you can add some jungle cock on it which I'm going to do. Now two small jungle cock eyes. This is optional, you don't have to do this, this is just, I've got some feathers so I'm going to use them. Now I just want small eyes, two small eyes. Normally you would think you'd put them at the back, but no, these are going to be at the front. They work extremely well. This fly can be obviously, it could be other colours, like you can change it to suit yourself. The black, the black body, yellow body, orange. Two small eyes. Make sure they're lined up. You can remember, you can put one individually or you can just together like that. It's up to yourself. Uh, it's fine, I'm happy with that. Just run down, fold back these feathers. I like to fold back the jungle cock, make sure it's secure. Then it means I've got to break off. You do it this way, uh, the other way to pull out. So what I'm going to do is just a nice clean cut by breaking them off. So I'm just going to then finish it 
but I'm going to change to a, a Globrite floss. Uh, this one here, which is number four. Globrite, nice and bright. So we're just on the top. And bite that off. Sometimes you've got to cut it. This brings the head up. You could use just varnish if you want. I'll just use the red thread itself. It's a good aiming point. And then we trim away the thread. And there we are. Now all I like to do is strengthen it up. I like to use the super glue and the fluff there. It dries practically instant like. And then a coat of varnish. Super glue dries quick. Uh, sets hard. Uh, the colour doesn't fade, especially the fluorescent floss. Keeps it nice and bright, as you can see. And uh, there we are. Simple wee fly, and uh, works extremely well. As I see, just put a nail on the feelers. You could put another two on if you want. I'm quite happy just with the two and uh, they work. It's a good dropper fly as much as a point. So anyway I hope you enjoyed that and uh, if you enjoy the videos uh, please subscribe and thank you for watching.